for a moment on October 7, 2022, it seemed that Justin Trudeau and the Liberals would finally follow through on a promise. He was forced to make to Canadians back in 2018 and list the IRGC, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. As a foreign terrorist organization, FTO, under the criminal code. Both he and Deputy Prime Minister, Christia Freeland, finally said the words and openly called the IRGC a terrorist group. This led to a few media outlets running with the story that the IRGC had been listed as a terrorist organization. But when the smoke cleared it was just another incident of Justin Trudeau protecting the Islamic Republic dressed up in some virtue signaling. Instead of listing the IRGC as an FTO under the criminal code, Trudeau put sanctions on members of the IRGC under the Immigrant and Refugee Protection Act IRPA. The important thing to note is that using the criminal code would have given the government the power to pursue IRGC members internationally and prosecute anyone who would join or aid the IRGC in Canada. The IRPA does not grant these powers. The only way Canada would be able to prosecute an IRGC member is if one of the listed commanders personally flew to Canada with a little giant bag of money to hand to someone. If instead, an IRGC member decides to use modern technology and launder money into Canada through someone whose name is not listed, there is nothing we can do. This seems to be par for the course when it comes to Trudeau and the Islamic Republic which has a long history with the regime in Iran. His brother and advisor Sasha Trudeau used to create propaganda documentaries for Press TV, which is the regime's international English language station. It was banned in the UK when it was proven that they were airing forced confessions from tortured political prisoners. Trudeau's big foreign policy goal back in 2015 was to re-establish ties with the Islamic Republic. After Harper closed the embassy in 2012, due to targeting of foreign dissidents in Canada, Trudeau did nothing when the regime kidnapped and murdered a Canadian-Iranian sociology professor Kavis said Imami. And when the IRGC shot down PS 752 murdering over 100 people, with connections to Canada he still refused to list them as an FTO and instead used government resources to defend the IRGC in a Canadian court. Trudeau only seems to do the absolute bare minimum against the regime when absolutely forced into it. That brings us to today when over 50,000 people showed up on the streets of Richmond Hill to protest the regime. The GTA is the major swing riding in federal politics and a large portion of the Iranian diaspora community is concentrated there. If the Liberals are seen to do nothing they could lose an entire generation in Canada's most impactful electoral districts. This is likely the catalyst for Trudeau's rather cynical announcement, instead of declaring the entire IRGC an FDO. He put 10,000 of its members of it under sanction under the IRPA. This looks like a big gesture, with a number like 10,000, but ultimately, it is just a travel ban for people who technically were not allowed to enter Canada in the first place. The message from Trudeau is as follows, to the Iranian activists who have been fighting for freedom for years a few. I choose the Malaha over the people the real gamble is to all the people who are new to the cause. The Liberals are betting on this being seen as a tough action against the regime that murdered Maso Amini and hoping that their media allies run enough obfuscation to stop people from seeing just how toothless it really is.